name is Scott Spaducci. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak to you this evening. While we do have a challenges here in Wilkesbury and uh, people do concentrate on the negatives, I want to talk a little bit about uh, some positive projects, uh, two of which I've introduced to the city before. Um, what I'd like to talk to you about uh, tonight is uh, River Common, and uh, there's another project called the Diamond City Walk of Fame and Museum. Uh, that is picking up steam amongst local business uh, owners and studying a lot of people are excited about that and I'll talk about it another meeting with only five minutes uh, this evening. So basically, um, my company's been located in downtown for seven years. Uh, I produced the River Common video for the Common. Uh, and uh, what I found out through my research is that it is in fact America's first park. And I know that there's some new members here of uh, council that uh, I'm happy to, uh, to see. And uh, I hope are more open to the fact that uh, America's first park is located in Wilkes-Barre, that we can build something very positive around that, including perhaps a national monument, and perhaps leading toward a national park. Um, certainly the facts are on my side. Uh, I'd like a chance to do a work session where I could reveal those facts to you, um, if that's a possibility. Um, it's black and white. I've talked to historians about this. It's, it's, it's there for the same. Um, so the public will be able to see this uh, on a regional network in the fall, free of charge, uh, and all the facts that the course laid out for them. Uh, another business regarding the River Common that I found out through my research uh, is that, you know, it's, it's owned by the public. It was the first public park in Pennsylvania, of course, first public park in America. Somehow that ownership was transferred to Luzerne County. I'd like uh, someone to provide some documentation as to how, why, when, and where the county took over uh, Wilkes-Barre's public park, our park, okay? So when the city was laid out, that, that was part of, of the city plan. Uh, and so the ownership was established in 1806, uh, another act in 1809, another one in 1827, clarifying uh, our ownership. And of course, Austin, which claims to be the first part, uh, there started in 1830. Uh, we beat them in every category. The Jeopardy question is actually wrong. So basically, um, right now what's happening is that there are two private groups that uh, hold control of our park, uh, rivercommon.org and Riverfront Parks Organization. They're the one percent country club types that uh, only allow the events that they want. Whereas I've had people complain to me because they know my history and background with the common and wanted to use the common. Can't find a phone number that works. Can't find a contact person to, uh, to bring uh, different events to the common that they should be allowed to bring to. It's our park, we should be able to use it. Uh, the park itself is falling into disrepair. I do have plenty of documentation, plenty of photos to show you the graffiti, the uh, bums that are now moving back in there, the buildings, uh, the drug activity, and so forth. We spent $30 million in that park. It's $6 million over budget. No one talks about that. Um, and I would like to see the River Common Commission reestablished that we once had. It's being run by outside people. I think that, and I certainly would volunteer to be on that, that commission. So that history does not repeat itself. This is the third time that we've uh, reconditioned the River Common. We spent far too much money. It is our greatest public asset right now. Any community that's ever concentrated on the riverfronts has seen a boom to their economy. Right now, it's going to waste. And uh, it's partly because of, of poor planning in terms of parking issues and, uh, and so on and so forth. So I realize that time is of the essence here, but I'm asking council if we could sit down and talk about um, how we may be able to move forward in a very positive way that will bring attention to Wilkes-Barre. We can certainly build a tourism-based economy if we get creative on how we utilize this park. So it's up to us uh, to do that. So I'm wondering if we can just sit down and figure out a plan, move forward together very positively. And then the next session, I'd like to talk about the Diamond City uh, Walk of Fame that basically honors people that were born, worked, or lived here that made a great contribution on the world stage. That's another thing that's going to help 
uh, lift our self-esteem, which we know is a huge problem here in Wolf Prairie with a poor self-image collectively, and that's something that we need to work on. That would also help, I think, in, in some ways with our drug problem. So uh, if you have any questions, I'm uh, certainly here to answer them. I'm always available to counsel to the mayor uh, that, so we can move forward on, on this initiative. If I can, uh, Mr. Bear, uh, specifically, what park are you referring to? Kirby Park, Nesbitt Park? Because uh, I'm a little confused. This is the first one here. The, the, the River Common. The River Common is a park. Okay. okay. In 1799, uh, Lord Butler, Matthias Hollenbach, uh, they were part of the first, uh, uh, and Jesse Felt, and Jesse, Judge Jesse Felt, uh, was the, they were the first park commission. They paid taxes to the uh, state in 1799, specifically for the park. Okay. So not only is it the first state park, it's certainly America's first park. Uh, so the River Common is a park. It's always been a park. Okay, Kirby Park was built in 1926. The Riverfront Parks uh, Committee, by the way, has let an Olmstead Park. That was designed by Frederick Olmstead Jr., who was, was the son, of course, of Frederick Olmstead, who, who was the father of landscape architecture in America. So to have an Olmstead Park become dilapidated like they've let it become was like having a Frank Lloyd Wright building become a sterling. Well, as a new council member, I'd, yes, I'd like to hear more information about it. I would love to provide more information. I certainly I'm not speaking for anyone else here. No, but I mean, thank you for your interest because uh, last time it was a contentious uh, political issue between Kathy Kane and I. I introduced a resolution uh, in the state legislature, but because I gave it to Phyllis Monday and not to her friend Eddie Kaczynski, it became a political issue and it became a political issue here. Mr. Brown, would you uh, coordinate any all of these? I'd be glad to. I, I, I'll give you a comment. Sure. Mayor, any comments? Uh, yes, I, know that, I know a lot of change with, with, the, with the, uh, the levies and when you talk about 17, like 1700, 1800, the levies weren't there. And with the levies now, that probably has something to do with ownership <laughs> and control of the common, common area. But anyway, that's the story. And I'm sure just to answer your question really quickly is that it's very, the legislation is very specific from 1827. That legislation uh, made the canals actually avoid, avoid the river kind of because it is this public established park. So therefore, it's public undivided land. It's in that legislature that I've asked. Yeah, right it's indisputable. Right? Yeah, so it's indisputable that, that the public owns the land. So anything's happening after that is... Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.